Oh. Hello YouTube, since I'm LH here, welcome to episode 24 of my Reactor Craft tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how to get power out of the fusion reactor. And yes, we're using boilers. Um, but we needed a new block that we haven't uh, built before. It's called the Neutron Absorber, and it is crafted simply with a block of steel and four depleted uranium, or a block of steel and eight depleted trezo fuel. If you remember, the trezo fuel was for the high temperature gas reactors, and of course, the uranium came out of uh, the fission reactors. It gives you a neutron absorber. You're going to need a lot of these. The neutron absorber is the block that the neutrons from the fusion reactor heat up. All right. So the neutron in a fusion reactor, the reactor blocks themselves are what heats up the boilers. In the fusion reactor, it's the absorbers. So if we go up top, there's a bit of a glitch in my uh, react uh, rotary craft right now where all the textures disappeared. I'm not sure why that is, but thankfully we're in reactor craft today. I'm going to show you two designs uh, for setting up boilers around a, a fusion reactor. And uh, we're going to start with, with this one actually. So this is the type of design that I see on Google Images a lot. Where people just where, where all you do is basically draw a rough circle of boilers and absorbers around the uh, react around the uh, part of the reactor that has the toroids. Because what happens here is that the uh, fission events, the fusion events, I mean, which actually create the neutrons, will only occur in and around the magnets, um, according to a, uh, a reliable source, rather than um, around the uh, plasma injectors. So this sort of uh, wall of absorbers and boilers um, will absorb uh, and capture the neutrons. You may want to put some uh, like steel blocks around the outside if you really want to block it and make sure that no neutrons can get through, but that'll take a little bit of testing. Now, this design over here, which is much thicker and contains many, many, many more boilers, is a design that was given to me by Omega Haxors who uh, is a self-professed master of all things Reika, and says that, uh, and he came up with a design for a basic unit, you could call it, of absorbers and uh, steam boilers. So if we go down to the lower floor, I'll just show you the uh, construction of the basic unit. So the idea is that you want every neutron absorber to have four boilers around it. So if I place an absorber here, I want to place a steam boiler on all four sides, all right? Um, and the other idea is to also have a buffers. Um, so you, you want to have four boilers around each one, but if I just put another absorber here, that's not what we want. We want to have more steam boilers. So what we do is we do it like that, okay? So once you have this, we can basically interpolate that by just building a square of boilers. This is the basic unit. Build a square, 2x2 two two square of boilers, and then just take your absorbers and stick them like so. Okay? So it, each one on a different little face, different little line here. And then we surround all of these with boilers. And what we get is this. It's not quite a swastika. <laughs> so, no, it's not. It's good. So, this design um, makes sure that all absorbers have four boilers and what also happens is that individual boilers act as the way he explained this to me they act as heat buffers for each other um, so the heat can be distributed among multiple boilers to keep anything from exploding so this is a lot of boilers to absorbers ratio so it's four boilers for every absorber um, now the cool thing about this design is that it tiles incredibly well if you notice we over here we have this sort of shape here with, with one there, two there, and one there. And that will fit perfectly over here. And that is how we ended up at this design. So I had to chop off a boiler in order to butt this up right against the, um, right up against the uh, plasma injector. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, build this for you, just so you can get an idea of exactly how we're doing it. So now, you have to make sure that your absorbers and boilers are on the same Y level, 
as the actual toroid magnet blocks and as the uh, outlet on the uh, plasma injectors. And yes, I know I have to change the direction that that plasma injector is facing. I know it's wrong. Um, so we put that there, and then we're going to build our 2x2 square of boilers, and we're going to place our absorbers, and we're going to surround them with boilers. So that we have our four boilers per absorber. Now, to tile this, it's very simple. We place a boiler here, an absorber. And now this absorber is the same as this absorber. So if I place two boiler, my 2x2 two two square of boilers here, I can then place my absorbers like so. And then I can, again, I can surround each of these with four boilers, right? And you can do that again, I'll show you that again. Boiler there, absorber. Then I can place my 2x2 two two of boilers like that and place my absorbers. So the design that he has tiles very well into this rounded pattern. So then what I did was I went around to the other side, which would be this side, and I built that same thing, but mirrored it, if that makes any sense. So the first absorber goes in the same spot, but then instead of having uh, we make sure that we build it out to the edge the same way. So we have the two boilers that come out here and then our second absorber. So our steam boilers can go there, but this time our absorbers go like this. So we build it in the opposite pattern. Basically we're just mirroring it so that it will match up with the other bits. Okay. So now that it's mirrored, we still place a boiler here and our second absorber will still go there. Let's see. And then we have our 2x2. Two two. And we place our absorbers. And our steam boilers. And we do that a total of three times. So once again, absorber. 2x2. Two the rest of our absor absorbers and our steam boilers. Now this is only necessary if you are running your fusion reactor with all four plasma injectors. Okay. And from what uh, Omega told me, the general rule of thumb, and we're just going to fill the center in with um, more boilers. From what Omega told me, um, the general rule of thumb is that if you're only using one plasma injector, okay, then you want to have um, one boiler for every absorber, but then for every injector that you're using, you need an additional boiler. That's why we have four boilers per absorber when, we have, when we're going to be running all four plasma injectors, which is what we're going to be doing here when we run all four. So that is how we end up with this big, thick uh, setup of, um, of boilers. And it is pretty nice. It fits the, the, the circle very well, and um, I like it. Now, you're going to obviously need an absolute ton of water to keep these, to fill these boilers, all right? So, and if you're, and we're going to talk about this later when we actually go to fire it up, but yeah, you need a lot of boilers. I mean, a lot of water. Um, the fusion reactor will use water incredibly quickly, so you need a very robust system for that. I recommend having a very, very, very large water holding tank just to make, give you a big buffer, and you're going to need, uh, yeah, it's going to be crazy. Now with all four of these running, um, we're going to use a lot of water. Um, we're also going to be running a lot of turbines, and we'll uh, talk about that in, in the future. So we're basically getting close to being finished with the tutorials for the fusion reactor um, before, be, up before we're actually almost ready to fire it up. Um, so there may not be a, uh, another reactor craft tutorial for a little while while I work on finishing this facility. Um, if you want to see me build, uh, if you want to see 
me building the, the rest of the uh, stuff in here, let me know in the comments and I can uh, record my building and I can maybe show you some bits, maybe go through the facility and explain what I'm doing. Um, I am going to uh, make some videos about the various Electrocraft systems I'm going to have in place for running this facility. I'm also going to be building uh, one or two or I don't know how many nuclear reactors uh, to get this thing running because it needs it. And I'll keep you abreast as far as that goes in uh, videos uh, when it's uh, applicable. But uh, we've pretty much covered everything that there is, all the blocks uh, that go into the fusion reactor. Now it's all, it's a numbers game and it's getting it set up. So uh, in the future though, I am going to show you, um, coming up soon, the next react reactor craft tutorial, um, I'm gonna be showing you a system for uh, uh, producing the liquid nitrogen. So you'll be able to see that, uh, that system and as well as um, that kind of thing. So uh, anyway, um, I have to think about it and uh, we'll see how it goes going forward. But of course, eventually you are gonna see the grand activation of this uh, reactor and hopefully nothing explodes, um, no plasma beams shoot off through the walls. But anyway, that'll be exciting when that happens. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Um, if you have any questions about what we covered in this episode, uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability, or Riker will, when he comes on here and tells whatever I did. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, stay tuned for future episodes. I'm Seton Leitch, and I'm signing out.